you used to move from branch office to branch office? What the hell did you get yourself into? You're really lucky to be back at headquarters. It's true that I've moved around from branch office to branch office, but not because I made a mistake. I know I'm a little peculiar myself, but this was a necessity. In the general affairs department at the head office where I'm being taken care of, Orville, who identified himself as the general manager, smiled wickedly. He introduces me to the manager and other employees in a very rude manner. Orville doesn't notice anything. He didn't notice that all the other employees had gone pale. I'm Curtis, a 34 year old office worker. I've been with my current company since I graduated from college, but for some reason I had to move from one branch office to another for five years. I had originally been working at the head office. I was surprised when I was first asked about the transfer and was quite concerned when I heard the length of time and the reasons for it, but I was still determined to make it work. I am now able to say that the hard work I have done over the past five years has been worth it. I am convinced that I have grown as a person and as a member of society. Looking back, there were many different people at each branch office, and they all had different ways of doing business. I almost lost my mind many times when I had troubles, but now I can look back on them fondly. I'll be able to see you anytime soon. I'm really happy. Well then, you should get warm and go to bed. Good night, Sherry. I hung up my phone with my girlfriend and took a small breath. I looked up at the calendar and saw that tomorrow's date was circled in red. Tomorrow I would finally be able to return to work at the head office. The department I will be working in is the general affairs department. I am being taken care of at several branch offices. So I have experienced various jobs from sales to desk work. I think the work in the general affairs department is the best fit for me. My boss at the last branch office I worked for said to me, You are a behind the scenes type of person. I think you are a good fit for the general affairs department. He was very impressed with me. Incidentally, the girlfriend I was calling earlier and I met when I was working at the head office and have been in a long distance relationship until now. I'm glad to be back at the head office. But I'm probably most happy to be able to see her whenever I want. I've got to tighten my grip. I lightly slapped my shoulders with both hands. It was the morning I went to work at the head office for the first time in a while. It happened as soon as I arrived at the head office and went to the general affairs department where I would be taken care of. A man in his late fifties approached me as soon as he saw me. Is this the new guy who is joining us today? Yes, my name is Curtis. I am looking forward to working with you from today. I shook hands with him, and the man smiled with satisfaction. I'm Orville, the manager of the department. I've heard a lot about you. The way he said that implied something that made me think. What? I look up at him. The manager scoffed at me as if he was making fun of me, and his mouth twisted in a nasty way. I heard that you used to move from branch office to branch office. You were probably sent around because of something you did. You're really lucky to be back at the head office. I was taken aback by his sudden comment. The manager, perhaps seeing that, lightly tapped me on the shoulder. You've worked hard for five years, huh? But alas, it seems the hardships will continue. I was at a loss as to what he was trying to say. It was true that I had been moving from one branch office to another. It was not for the reason that the general manager imagined. I myself know that it is a little peculiar, but this was all necessary. I'm not at all sure if you are a competent person. Seems like HR sent me a troublesome guy. I'm going to train you hard, so be prepared. The manager shakes his head and sighs. With all due respect, I haven't done anything wrong. There is a reason why I was moving from branch office to branch office. I was working diligently. I have received proper recognition from those who have become my superiors. I straightened my back and denied the manager's words. The manager stared at me. You're cocky for someone who just moved here. He crossed his arms and intimidated me. Meanwhile, it was almost time to start work and the employees came into the office one after another. 
They stole a glance at me and the general manager. I could faintly hear them saying things like, "Isn't that him? I heard a rumor that he's going to be transferred here." The manager saw that the chief had also entered the office and spoke up. Chief, everyone, this is the kind of incompetent who's been hanging around the branch office for the past five years. You guys, get him out of our way so he doesn't get in the way of our work. My cheeks flushed with heat at the blatant choice of words. I was filled with disbelief that this was an adult speaking. I look forward to working with you. All the employees, except for the manager and myself, turned pale. I guess they were all feeling a bit uncomfortable with the manager for saying too much. I'm going to have a smoke. Chief, take care of the rest. The manager laughed at me and left the office with light steps. The clock had just struck the start of the workday. What's with the competent personnel? As I was grumbling to myself, the manager came up to me and said, oh, "It's Curtis, isn't it? I'm Jim, the section chief." Whenever someone who seems to be a good person comes in, the manager calls him incompetent and intentionally takes his job away from him. Maybe he thought you were going to get ahead based on the preliminary materials and what he saw of you. Rest assured that we don't take his comments seriously. I don't know how much these words from the section chief saved my life. Then let me ask you to introduce yourself again. As I finished my introduction, one of the employees raised his hand and asked me a question. My eyes widened when I heard the question. Then about half a month passed. As the manager had declared, I was spending my days as if I were a housekeeper. I was not only restocking the copier with paper and supplies, but also sweeping the floor. Sometimes I was even ordered to give him shoulder massages for some reason. What's more, he didn't like the way I massaged him. Not there. You're too weak. Too weak. He complains a lot about it. That's a great form of power harassment, isn't it? I sigh in my mind. Fortunately, everyone around me was helping me out. Other employees are also afraid of the manager, so they can't be so blunt. I'm glad that the other employees are softly covering for me and following up. While the manager was pushing me to do chores, the section chief and other coworkers taught me how to do my work in the general affairs department. In between, I was learning to do my job. Curtis, thanks for your hard work. We're having a company event today, so let's go to the venue together later. I thanked him. Today is a day when the next president is announced as an in-house event. There is a large venue that is used by our company. The announcement of the next president will be made during a reception there. However, since it is an announcement event for the next president, many employees, including myself, will attend. Each department has its own table, which is divided into different areas. I was inevitably seated near the general manager. To be honest, I don't care who the president-elect is, as long as it's not someone I have a hard time dealing with. Orville stared at the glass of beer he was holding and took a breath as if it was too much trouble. He really is all about himself, isn't he? He stares at me as if he can see through my inner thoughts. What is it? Still not working hard enough? After the announcement of the president, I will go to the president and the president-elect to greet them. As a subordinate, think of something to make me look good. I glanced at the president, Mr. Joseph, and the executives seated near the podium. The president's son and daughter were chatting with each other. I wondered if the son would take over. No, it could be the daughter who works in accounting. I heard such speculations from people around me. Both of them are the children of the president, and both of them are excellent people who work hard at this head office. After a while, the announcement of the next president finally began. The president introduced the president's eldest son, who went up on the stage and gave a speech as the next president. I had a chance to talk with the president-elect before. He gave me an impression of a man with a calm demeanor and a strong core. After the president-elect finished his speech, the employees clapped their hands. I have one more announcement to make. My daughter has just become officially engaged. I was startled by these unexpected words. 
and my surroundings were buzzing with surprise. At the president's call, the president's daughter stepped up to the podium, smiling shyly. Then, the president looked at me. Come on, you too. He beckoned me with a smile. All eyes were on me at once, especially the manager's, and he had a look on his face that seemed like his eyeballs are almost going to fall out. With the general manager in the background, I went to the president and his daughter, Sherry, who both welcomed me warmly. The president then started to introduce me. My first encounter with Sherry, the president's daughter and fiancé, dates back to shortly after I joined the company. I was still having trouble adjusting to the spacious head office and Sherry was kind enough to help me out. At the time, I did not know that she was the president's daughter. I got to know her like a senior employee of the company and was attracted to her. After several years of unrequited love, I took the plunge and confessed my feelings to her. At that time, I heard that she was the president's daughter. I was quite embarrassed when I learned that she was famous within the company. After that, I went to greet the president of the company to ask him about our relationship. Although he expressed her enthusiasm for me, we were still young, so perhaps he was concerned about us. The president made a certain condition. I want you to go to the branch offices for at least five years for training. If you marry Sherry, you will become the boss's relative. So ignorance about the company is not acceptable. I want you to deepen your understanding of the company and hone your skills as a member. Sherry was worried that it was too heavy a burden, but the moment I saw her anxious face, I said, Please, let me do it. When the president's explanation and our greetings were over, the sound of applause spread throughout the hall again. When I got off the stage, Orville was waiting for me. Unlike usual, he had a very smug expression on his face, which made me feel a little creeped out. Curtis, can I have a word? He pulled me toward the corner while looking at Sherry, who was with me. The manager wiped his seat with his handkerchief and asked me impatiently, Why didn't you tell me that you were the fiancé of the president's daughter? I almost laughed for a moment at the way he was talking to me. When he found out that I was a member of the president's family, he became afraid that I would tell on him for what he had done. When I remained silent, he continued to speak. Well, you're at fault too, so why didn't you say so on your first day at work? The manager tried to look cheerful, but his voice was shaky and slightly hoarse. Since I started working at the head office, the general manager has been verbally abusive to me and has forced me to do a lot of chores. He treated me as if I were of a lower rank and in a weaker position than he was. But once he finds out I'm engaged to the president's daughter, he smiles thinly and plays the serious boss now. I glanced at him. Sherry was watching us from a little distance with a worried look on her face. Everyone in our department knew about it except you. The general manager's eyes widened as I said this. That's absurd. All I heard was that you were being transferred from the branch office. That's right, I'm just an employee with no position. I was surprised at first too. On my first day at work after the manager had gone to the smoking area, I was introduced by the section chief and greeted everyone. One of the employees asked me a question. Is it true that you are engaged to the president's daughter? Both the chiefs and my eyes widened at that question. When I checked with Sherry later, I found out that she had told a good friend of hers about me. That must have been the reason the rumor spread. Seeing that, the section chief and the manager did not know about it. It was mainly a rumor among the younger employees. It's not right for me to lie. However, I'd like to ask everyone to treat me as a regular employee. I would appreciate it if you would keep it a secret. That's why when the general manager was making fun of me, What? Isn't this guy the fiancé of the president's daughter? Everyone went pale. The general manager was sweating so much when he learned of the series of events. Wiping it off with a handkerchief would no longer be enough. Then I had an idea. Oh, that's right. You said you wanted to greet the president after the president-elect's speech, didn't you? 
As a subordinate, I have to tell him how much you've helped me. He gulped at my words. No, it's okay, the others are talking to him now. I'm just going to bother him if you tell him now. He shakes his head, and someone approaches us. I'll be right between you and my father and brother if you want to say hello to them. Sherry appears from behind me. Sherry originally knew how I was being treated by the general managers. I didn't want to worry her, so I didn't tell her, but it seems that all of Sherry's friends in the company were informing her. I heard that my fiancé has been very helpful to you. Sherry's tone was quite sounded like she knew what was going on, and the general manager's face turned pale, even more in a flash. He seemed to sense the aura of anger oozing from Sherry's smile. When the general manager was taken to the president and president-elect, the general manager is finally in a half-crying state. The president and the president-elect had heard a lot of things from Sherry beforehand. They looked at him coldly. They were giving the general manager the cold shoulder, pretending to be unaware. He was always giving me a lot of chores to do, restocking supplies, cleaning rooms, and even giving him massages. The section chief and all my colleagues teach me how to do general affairs work. But the general manager scolds them all for wasting their time teaching an incompetent person like me. I smiled and explained my usual work style and the verbal abuse I received. Both the president and the president-elect sighed loudly. Sherry's smile faded and she was shaking with anger. Curtis is modest about the fact that he is only my daughter's fiancé and has no authority over her. But I think he will be a better man than you, Orville. Of course, it all depends on how hard he works. I was actually thinking of a position at the same time as he was working at the head office. But Curtis said he didn't want to do it because he wasn't good enough yet. I don't know what you don't like about him, but it's outrageous to take his job force him to do chores, and then force him to work hard for everyone around him. The eyes of the people around us, who had been chatting with each other, were soon focused on us. The section chief and other employees who had been so kind to me were smiling faintly. It seems that the general manager had been causing problems even before I was assigned to him. They must have had their own piled up feelings. The general manager slumps on the spot. I am so sorry. He apologized to me in a voice like a mosquito. I whispered to the manager who was kneeling down. By the way, I have evidence of all the unreasonable things you have said and done. He said he's a good man, but all he does is talk and he doesn't do any work at all. That kind of thing is called stealing wages. This is a good opportunity for me to report everything to you, including his usual work attitude. As soon as I finish my words, the general manager lets out a groan. I cannot see his face clearly, but he is probably crying. I was surprised by the announcement of my engagement following the announcement of the next president, but I was relieved to be able to give the general manager a big payback. I am sure that tomorrow I will be able to do my regular work instead of chores. Later, Orville was demoted to a rank of regular employee and transferred for neglect of duty and power harassment. He was told that he would be sent to various branch offices for a few years, just like me. I'm going to quit this company, he said, and submitted his resignation. However, his wife was furious with Orville for resigning without notice. They got into a big fight over divorce. In the end, she asked him to withdraw his resignation notice. Of course, the president of the company would not accept it and rejected it immediately. As for me, I am living a happy life with my fiancé, Sherry. I am getting along well with my former section chief who had been promoted to general manager and my co-workers, and it's smooth sailing. I will try not to be arrogant because I am a member of the president's family, and I will try to keep a humble heart.